Hello, my name is Collection Connoisseur. I collect digital thingamabobs in video games, and today I'm playing Hollow Knight. Last time on Hollow Knight, I completed a couple more Radiant battles, including both the Pure Vessel and the Nightmare King Grim. Those two happen to be two of the bosses that are in the fourth pantheon, which is my target for this episode. I'm going to put on these charms. So those are my battling charms for the fourth pantheon. But even though I said that those are the charms for the fourth pantheon, the first thing that I'm going to do is try all four bindings, which means the charms that I put on don't make a difference. I do not expect to win all four bindings the first time. I'm going to try it at least once, maybe up to three times. If that doesn't work, I'm going to go down to one binding and try to beat it with one binding. So the Enraged Guardian is the first one. The Enraged Guardian, I believe I can beat without much trouble, even with all four bindings on. Oh, -ho. he almost jumped on me. Him jumping on me is probably one of the more dangerous things that he could do. Tried to jump on me again. You saw that, right? Did that again. It only made one flash all the way to the right. <laughs> That's interesting. I tried to charge up a a nail art by the way there. I just didn't have enough time to charge one up. So there's the first damage, which means I do want to heal that. So we're healing one damage. We took two because that was the Enraged Guardian. The Lost Kin. The Lost Kin I've beaten the Radiant form of. But still, at least one of the th nice things about the Lost Kin is that the Lost Kin has several places in the battle where the Lost Kin is staggered. So I should be able to heal damage that I take as long as I don't take too much more damage. Of course, the little bubble monsters do make that a lot harder because they prevent me from healing some of the times that I might heal. Yeah, but the Lost Kin, I think I can do in this with four bindings on. Going well so far. Let's even heal up to full. There we go. <laughs> and then I immediately got hit, but I did get to full for a second there. And I didn't get hit because I healed. I got hit just randomly afterward. Okay, that jump was almost dangerous. Almost got hit by him there. Heal up. Nice. Up to full again, and we immediately get hit. <laughs> Glad I'm healing, considering how much I get hit right after healing. Alright. Oh, I dodged that one poorly. Alright, let's heal up. We're not at full, but... I can take a hit from a boss that does two damage, which is important, because several of the bosses in this pantheon do two damage. Just saying. I would be using spells here, except that I really want to heal that damage. Here's my opportunity. There we go. Full health again. Oh man, that was unfortunate. I dodged into where he was going. Now I need to heal a damage again. Heal up again. All right, we might actually be full at the end of this battle. 
So this battle is going to be... Actually, I healed one because I still had one after the Enraged Guardian. So this battle is even better than a wash. I actually healed up. I mean, so far. Haven't won yet. Well, now I have. So the Lost Kin actually went very well. Next. Next is No Eyes, but it's not the Ascended version of No Eyes. So it should be no problem at all. I mean, even the Ascended version should be no problem. But certainly the non-Ascended version is no problem. It's just going to take a while, because I don't deal much damage. So I guess while we're fighting No Eyes, because No Eyes is going to take a long time, I'm going to talk about charms. So I'm still trying to talk about charms that I'm never going to use. The next one on that list is the Fluke Nest. The Fluke Nest is a charm that changes my, my sideways spell. So instead of making a big blast that goes all the way to the side, it shoots out little flukes. And the little flukes don't go very far. I imagine for that charm to be useful at all, that it has to do more damage than the normal spell does. And that might be the only reason why you'd use it, is because it deals more damage. You just have to get right up close to an enemy to use it. That's just not how I use my side spell. If I'm up right close to an enemy, I'm going to hit the enemy with a nail. So therefore, the way that it changes my side spell takes away the reason that I actually use the side spell. And that's pretty unfortunate for me ever to use that charm. I tried it very briefly and decided I didn't like it. So I might try it again just because I don't think I gave it enough of a try. I didn't give it due attempt to decide never to use it again. But I probably won't use it again, or not anytime soon. So that is the Fluke Nest. I think that I'm getting close to the end of this battle. There we go. I, I was right on it. We were very close to the end of that battle. Next. Next is the Traitor Lord. The Traitor Lord could definitely kill me here. I mean, for one, the Traitor Lord does two damage a pop, so if I get hit just twice, I die. Now granted, I can dodge everything that the Traitor Lord does pretty okay, I think. But still, I think I've made mistakes with the Traitor Lord a few times. There's one right there. And the Traitor Lord is very hard to, to heal in. Although I did just barely heal there. Whoa. Did not know what the Traitor Lord was doing. Not knowing what your enemy is doing is a bad thing. Ho oh ho, I healed and I was able to dash through. That was awesome. Alright, we healed up to full while in the middle of fighting the Traitor Lord. That seems pretty good. Still, I'm sure this battle has a long way to go. And I need to not make mistakes in order to do well in it. Oh man. That was an unfortunate one because I thought that I was far enough away that I wouldn't get hit. Heal once. That was a very poor heal. That means that we die if we get hit once, even if we heal once. Okay, so... When am I going to get this heal in? Whoa, ho Almost died there. I'm thinking about when I'm going to get the heal in, because if I, if I don't get the heal in, we die. Okay, I got one heal in. That's unfortunately not enough. I need another heal. And before we can get another heal, we need to get enough 
a soul to get that other heal. Okay, that Trader Lord ended up dealing me one damage. Still, I think it's pretty good that I've gotten this far. It's just that, what's next? The White Defender. The White Defender, I don't feel like has many spots where I can heal. That's a problem. I can heal while he's bouncing. He's not bouncing right now. Actually, I can heal right here. There we go. Alright, fully healthy again. Let's see if I can defeat the White Defender. I'm not great at the White Defender. Oh, right. Forgot about that move. The move that... Ooh. The move that makes the White Defender different than the Dung Defender? <laughs> in terms of move set? Okay, heal here. Great. We healed once. That's kind of not close to enough. But with one heal, maybe we can get another. Alright, here's a place where we heal. And then we jump over that. Wonderful. Maybe I can heal in the White Defender fight just fine. Not dealing him much damage, I don't think. Which is sort of a problem, but we'll deal with that problem over time. The first problem is getting fully healthy. Alright, this is a time where we heal. Jump over that. Oh gosh, I dashed into that attack of his, which is not the best. Don't dash into the attack. I need him to be bouncing around, by the way, before I feel comfortable healing. There we go. Heal once. I think I've got the patterns down. What I need to do is just not get hit the occasional times that I do get hit. But I've got the healing patterns down. Oh, there he goes. Lost at the White Defender. So I am going to try that again, because I got pretty far with all four bindings, and I think that I played poorly at the White Defender in ways that I can do better at. So, Enrage Guardian first. Enrage Guardian can be a problem, but as long as we're patient, and careful. Unlikely to be a problem. And remember I can use spells. Spells are actually very good in this fight. Because there's some times where you can't really get up close to him to deal him damage, but you can use a spell. Oh gosh, that was a terrible time to use a spell, by the way. I have to use a spell when he's not actively shooting at me. That's an important thing to do. Oh man. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to learn how to heal in this battle, and I'm doing very poorly. I got one heal, but one heal is pretty meaningless. I can heal sometimes when he starts that. All right, well, that was no better than we did the first time with the Enraged Guardian. The Lost Kin I was able to heal up in. Let's do that again. Let's heal up in the Lost Kin battle. The Lost Kin is going to be long. Oh gosh, that was, that was poor. Heal up once. Oh, hit that thing. Hit that thing faster. <laughs> I need, need to get to a place where the Lost Kin is staggered again so I could hope to heal. And we're not getting there fast. Heal once. Good. We have to heal two more times. 
which means don't get hit, because getting hit is the opposite of healing. Be careful about the jump. I remember how I did the Radiant version of this, where I tried to stay on the ground mainly. I think that's not as good, generally, as jumping to kill the little blob enemies sometimes. But if you get hit once and you die, it's an important thing to do. Oh man, he goes farther there than I think he does, doesn't he? Need you to be staggered once again. I need you to be staggered once again. There we go. Heal up. Hit that thing. There we go. I don't know if it's the quick slash that allows me to hit that that fast, but if it is, I think the quick slash. Heal up, and we're at full. Wonderful. So the Lost Kin has been the healing battle after the Enraged Guardian, which we honestly shouldn't have gotten hit in. But so it goes. If you need a healing battle, we at least have one. Great. Keep going, just a little bit further maybe. I have staggered him a lot of times. A number of times that I think of as quite a high number. Got him. Great. So we healed again to full. Next is... is... I almost said Umu. No Eyes. No Eyes is the slow one. So as before, I will use this time to talk about charms. The next charm to talk about is the Dream Wielder. So the Dream Wielder is a charm that I don't remember if I've ever worn, which is kind of sad. I really should actually wear my charms. But the Dream Wielder has a very interesting description that I was... I was told to read all of the descriptions of my charms before doing a particular thing, and so it did cause me to read the descriptions of these charms. And the Dream Wielder has an interesting description. It tells you you can use your Dream Nail faster, and that you can get soul from enemies while using the Dream Nail. Now that is very interesting. It's a way to get soul from enemies, especially ones that don't give you soul. And therefore, it's an interesting thing to try out. Now, in what I'm currently doing, in the Hall of the Gods and the Pantheons, it's hard for me to imagine a time where getting soul from using the Dream Nail would be important for this particular section of the game. So I don't think I'm going to be wearing it here in this save file. But still, that is a charm that I think I could use for various other things. I was told, for example, that that you could get soul while fighting the failed champion. And the Dream Nail, the, the Dream Wielder charm, is one of the ways that you could potentially do that. So that's cool. I think that's interesting. I think that's worth knowing about, and I'm glad that I have now read the charm description, and potentially I will use that in the future, although, like I said, probably not in this save file. Meanwhile, let's heal up, because No Eyes is not a battle to come out of with damage, right? Unfortunately, I don't have soul right now because I've been using spells, which I think is good. But I need to get some souls so that I can heal. I really don't want to go into the next fight, which I believe is the Traitor Lord. I don't want to go into the Traitor Lord with damage on. Seems like a bad idea. Almost hit like three different things there. I almost hit two of the spells and I almost hit the spikes. Okay, let's heal again. We're at full. Now we just need there to be not spells all around, no eyes. 
There we go. No eyes defeated. Next. Next is the Traitor Lord, as I thought it was. Now, I can simply not get hit by the Traitor Lord. I haven't done... Oh gosh, I, I got hit right after saying I can get... I can not get hit. <laughs> I haven't done the Traitor Lord in the God Home, the, the Radiant version of the Traitor Lord, but I think that it's not that much of a problem. All right, I got one good heal in. That's good. I need another good heal. Don't know what he's doing. Okay. Yeah, I think the Traitor Lord is some is a boss that I could get better at and defeat the Radiant version of the boss without too much trouble. Oh gosh, I just got hit there. That's not good. I was expecting to get a heal off there. Instead, I got hit. But it would be nice if I had done that before I came in here and tried to do this, you know? So that I had that training down. I could reliably do it in some way. But even without that training, I think I'm doing pretty okay. Just need to heal again. There we go. I healed to full. Now let's defeat the Traitor Lord without taking any more hits. Good. I've noticed that when I go further away from the Traitor Lord, he does different moves. I didn't realize that the moves he did were based on what I did. Also, if I run into him, I only get hit for one damage. It's when he hits me that he does two. That's good to know. And I was able to heal that one. So I'm doing great. Traitor Lord down. Full health. The next one, I think, is where I died last time. Yeah, the White Defender. I think I can defeat the White Defender with all four bindings. Have to be a little bit more careful. There we go. Got a nice hit in with a spell. I like that. Really, I believe that I can dodge everything that the White Defender does, and I just need to do that. Be careful not to dodge into what he's doing. That's one way to get damaged, in a very sore way. Starting to use a couple spells against him, that's good. Using spells is a good way to deal more damage in the fight than you would without the spells. Especially when you've got the nail binding on, in particular. I think he always lands like that, after he bounces. Which is another difference between the Dung Defender battle. Great. I have not gotten hit once yet, so I'm doing much better than last time. Almost dodged directly into a Dung Ball, though. That's not good. And... Shoot him again. There we go. I got hit by that dung ball. Should have probably dodged through it, honestly. I think that was the right thing to do, was attempt to dodge through the dung ball. Oh man, heal. That was the healing spot, but I also got hit there, so we're still down one. Ooh, down two. Down two is not great. But I don't have many spots where I feel comfortable healing. Although, this is one of them. So now we're only down one. Oh gosh. Heal. Again, I got hit during the healing spot. So I ended up staying even. Good. 
Maybe he's going to start bouncing himself? Nope. Bounce yourself, man. I need to heal. Ooh, that was not good. Oh, this is not good. I don't like my position here. Alright. This is not a place where I can heal. I can hit him a good amount, but I cannot heal. Alright, please do your bouncing. Yes. Oh no! Oh no! I got hit by the dung ball, and I died. Alright, so I've tried that twice. That put us pretty far into the episode, so now what I'm going to do is try this with just one binding. And I'm going to choose the nail binding. So I've got my shell, charms, and soul. I think I can do this. Am I going to do it on the first try? I don't know. But I think I can do it at least. Oh right, and I do a ton more damage. Even though I still have my nail binding on, I do have my strength charm on. And I have my longer nail. All of those are good things. Not to mention a full soul egg. With which we can use spells. And we've got extra... extra health. And the ability to heal more than one at a time. Man, having less bindings on really makes the bosses easier, right? Ooh, that one's not great because I can't heal all of that damage, though. I'm doing extremely poorly. I took the bindings off and I did more... I did worse. <laughs> oh well. We'll get it all back in the lot skin. I was too happy to have all of my abilities back. And I ended up doing worse in the battle. Now, here's a good time to heal. We can only heal once, though, because of the little blob enemies. So even though I have a full soul egg, I can't really use that to heal, because I need my time to heal, which I'm not going to get while he's staggered like that. So I should be using this soul to do spells sometimes. Heal. Excellent time to heal. Great. And downward spell. Nice. Downward spell is a quite nice one to use, I think, because it gets rid of the little blob enemies. Heal once. That heal. I had to keep going after I started it, otherwise I think I would have gotten hit and not heal. But the heal definitely did not work. Because it was poor timing. You have to defeat the blob enemies that are near you before you do that. Heal. And defeat the blob enemy. Great. Lost kin. I fear you not, as you might imagine at this point. Next, I think next is no eyes. All right, this is going to go faster, but still, it's going to be a slow battle. So I am going to use this time once again to talk about charms. The next charm to talk about would be the sharp shadow. So the sharp shadow deals enemies damage when you dash. I think that's in particular when you dash through them. I do dash through enemies a fair amount, but I don't think I dash through enemies enough times to use what I think is a two cost, a two charm notch cost charm in order to deal some damage while I'm doing it. And I don't think that that dashing through enemies more than I do right now is really a style of battle that I'm going to get better at, that I'm really going to do. So I'm declaring that charm not a charm that I'm going to use much at all. I like the idea of it. It's interesting to have in the game. I like it. I might 
I might use it in some like very strange challenge run that I do of something, but I'm not going to use it normally. So the sharp shadow, not a charm I'm going to use. Here we are at the Trader Lord. Gotten much better at you, I think. I can I can defeat the Trader Lord without getting hurt, I think. Not just heal it up, but just not get hurt. Look at that. That's a pretty good set of hits, I do say. Yeah, look at this. This is really nice. Oh, I, I ran into him. <laughs> it was technically him hitting me, though, so I did get de dealt two damage, even though I was the one that ran into him instead of him running into me. Oh well. Almost did not get hit. Next, the White Defender. The White Defender is apparently the bane so far of this Pantheon. So watch it. Watch me when I have when I have all of the... What am I trying to say? When I don't have all of the bindings on, watch me do just fine in this fight. I mean, that hasn't happened so far, so apparently it's not going to happen, but... <laughs> I was thinking that it might. I do want to heal. When is a good time to heal? When he's bouncing. When he's bouncing around is a good time to heal. Also, I finally noticed that the number of balls that he throws in the air tells you what he's going to do next. If he throws two, he's going under the ground. If he throws three, he's becoming a ball himself. Oh, shot the spell the wrong way. I need you to become a ball so that I can heal. There we go. Heal. I almost got hit by him when he leapt into the ground, by the way. <laughs> Just barely not... not there. Second part of the battle, I'm in a terrible spot. Alright, I did not get hit by him. <laughs> I thought I might get hit by him when he leaped under the first time. It's happened to me before. Hey, that's where I was standing. Not fair. One more ball? No. Now, I should remember that I can heal easily three times after the battle as well. Ooh, darn. Because I have my full soul egg, so I can heal those two hits that I ended up with. Unlike when you've got all four bindings. Oh, interesting. So I got the fountain room before the next battle. I think the next battle is the Nightmare Grim. No, the next battle is the Failed Champion. He hits the ground up to three times and he jumps over you. So then this one, I think I could actually not take any damage and end up with my with my blue face is still on. Let's see if I can do that. Nope. <laughs> Apparently not. Let's shoot him once. Don't want to shoot him too many times because I can't get that soul back in this fight. Oh man, I dashed into where he was landing the hammer. Okay, well, I lost all of my blue faces. Instead of keeping them, I lost them all. Oh, and I ran into where he was going there. <laughs> well, it has been a while since I fought. I fought the failed champion, but man, am I showing it. I'm much more out of practice than I thought I would have been. He's hitting the ground. 
hitting the ground. And I jumped into where he was he was going. <laughs> Not the smartest option. Why am I healing? That was dumb. Don't heal. You can heal at this part, I guess. <laughs> so the failed champion, I actually went one health down, even though I had blue faces. That was an awful show showing. <laughs> This is Markoth. Markoth is a very dangerous one in this pantheon, I think. Having my long nail definitely helps here, because hitting him when I have the long nail is a lot easier than hitting him when I don't have the long nail. I would like him to be a little further away from me. And when he spins, I can heal damage. Yeah, so I can heal one here. Great. The second part of this fight is a lot more difficult. Just remember that. We're not there yet, but the next part of this fight becomes a lot more difficult. Oh, <laughs> I thought he was done spinning. Apparently I was not. He was not done spinning. Just get little hits on him when you can. Mainly you're trying to dodge. Yeah. Dodge the nails. Hit him only occasionally. Alright, I'm gonna go over here and shoot him with a spell. Seems like the best way to hit him there. I don't really know how I'm going to approach the Radiant version of Markov. And having this fight right here is not is not giving me many ideas. Other than hitting him with spells from a distance while he's doing the the shield spin is probably a good idea. But you have to get the soul to hit him with spells, which is potentially a problem. Yeah, I ran out of soul to heal, by the way. So I actually need to get some hits on him before I can do anything else. Got one hit. <laughs> Alright, well I defeated him, and I'm one health down, so I guess that's even with where I was before. The Watcher Knights. These do not bother me. I am really not bothered by the Watcher Knights. And I probably should heal this one health while there's only one not Watcher Knight, like right now. Okay, there's another Watcher Knight. Dealing less damage because of the... because of the nail binding is a problem. By the way, the Watcher Knights is one of the battles where I probably should be using the Great Slash. Because there are a number of times where I can't do much of anything except jump to avoid damage. So I should be charging great slashes at those times. Yeah. And of course use spells. Spells are very useful in this battle too. That was a poorly timed great slash, but otherwise I think it was a fine idea. How many of the Watcher Knights have I defeated so far? Two or three? I don't know, but it's going to be going to be some time to defeat all the Watcher Knights. Got in a good Great Slash there. A good Great Slash is kind of a weird thing to say.
Yeah, charging great slashes in the Watcher Knight battles. The only problem is how long it takes me to do like the animation of the great slash. If they do one of their small attacks, I might get hit. Oh gosh, <laughs> he didn't he didn't roll very far. That messed me up. That second heal was ill-advised. Oh gosh. Need to know what both of them are doing. Okay, one down. Or one more down, I should say. I think what, I, what I'm trying to say is that I believe there's one left. Could have dashed through right then. I want to be fully healthy. And honestly, I could have done that at the end of the battle. I still have the all four bindings concept in my head, where I can only heal one at the end of each battle. All right, that's the Watcher Knight. Next is the Soul Tyrant. All right, as we discovered, I'm very poor at the crazy phase of the Soul Tyrant in terms of avoiding all damage. But I think avoiding all damage is is not the most important thing. As long as I can heal up at the end, then we're fine. But I very recently did the Radiant version of the Soul Tyrant, so I think this fight will not be so bad. Just take some time and patience. Not enough patience that I can speak about charms like I could with no eyes. I mean, maybe that's true. Maybe that's not true. Maybe I could speak about charms. I guess I will. So, if I'm in the category of charms that I will never use again, one of those, which is kind of cheating, is the Fragile Heart. So the Fragile Heart is a charm that I will never use again because I do not have it anymore. I am using the Unbreakable Heart right now. Both the Fragile Heart and the Unbreakable Heart cost two charm notches and give you two health. To white health. White health is so much better than blue health. Obviously, that's not very useful in radiant battles, but it is extremely useful in these Pantheon challenges, in my opinion. Having two more health means you can survive a little bit longer at the end, and maybe then you could heal up a bit. So I like having the unbreakable heart for these types of battles. Earlier, when I had the breakable heart, in other words, the fragile heart, the fragile heart was a charm that I really liked to use during the normal game, during normal Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight adventure. Because whenever you encountered a new boss and you had to figure out how the new boss worked, having two extra health gives you a little bit more time to learn the boss. And honestly, a little bit more time to learn the boss is a lot better than dealing more damage when it's the first time you've ever seen the boss. So I really liked the Fragile Heart for new bosses when I was playing through the normal Hollow Knight adventure. And now that we're in the Pantheon battles, I really like the Unbreakable Heart for the Pantheon. Alright, dodge all of these so far. Missed one of them. Missed two of them. Let's see, I cannot defeat him in one go because I have the nail binding on. So, oh, never mind. Even with the nail binding, if you just smash him with the quick slash and the the unbreakable strength apparently you can defeat him in one go so we healed all the way up and apparently i was wrong about the nightmare king grim being in this pantheon 
thou returned across thy nail with this pure vessel, for what purpose we can only wonder. Does combat draw thee closer together? Dost thou also desire attunement with the gods? Or dost thou hide some other desire deep within thee? I mean, I have a lot of desires, sir. Or ma'am. I'm not actually sure about that. So we're at the final battle with the nail binding. And I kind of got here without much trouble. And I don't think the pure vessel is going to be much trouble either. So having only one binding is not so bad. I do know how to fight this. Remember how to fight the pure vessel. You still have to fight. He's still a hard fight, even if you know what you're doing. So, don't mess up so much. Let's focus. Heal once. Don't want to heal twice, because if we... If I failed the second heal, then I would lose more... more health than I was getting back. But we can heal every damage that we've gotten, because he does... Oh, well, that makes it harder, but... He does get staggered several times in this fight, and I can heal damage when he's staggered. Probably shouldn't try to heal damage any other time, but healing one while he's staggered, perfectly fine. Healing one here is fine too. Well, actually, it's not fine, because the ball might appear right on you. Heal once. Maybe the chance games say that that does work, the heal once there. I don't know. I'm kind of healing a lot, and I don't really need to heal a lot, I don't think. I just need to do the battle a little bit better than I am. And I know this battle. I beat the Radiant Virgin last time. Shoot him once. I thought he was doing the creepy move there, by the way. I don't think he's gotten there yet. Maybe he will get there now, though. Expect the creepy move. Sometimes. Oh, gosh. I was right in the middle of a ball. I did not get out of the way. Got him. Heal once. Creepy move and slash. Oh, dodge through. Did not dodge through appropriately. Creepy move. Hit him a couple times. Great. Heal once. Probably don't need to heal anymore at that phase. Yeah. And we win. With the nail binding. Only the nail binding, but still. The fourth pantheon with the nail binding. Done. Great. 22 minutes. And I... There were a lot more gods in there that I remembered. I did not get very far with all four bindings. That is going to be the episode. I was trying to think about what I'm doing next time. Haven't decided yet. So I'm just going to save at this bench over here, and we're going to do something next time. This is my new outro screen. It pictorially represents what I have left to do in Hollow Knight. Six bosses to do their radiant form, and two pantheons, the fourth and the fifth, four bindings each. And we can erase the nail binding from this episode on the fourth pantheon. New episodes every Sunday, and as always, thanks for watching.